Uh, I have the great pleasure of uh, speaking today with Dr. Dua um, about the two lectures that, that you that that you gave today. Really, really cool stuff. You uh, spoke today um, about a combination of tenoplasty and an autologous conjunctival graft. Can, can I get you to, to discuss this? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me on this program. Um, we were talking about chemical burns and acute stage management of chemical burns. When you have uh, limbal ischemia, the standard procedure is you dig in the deep in the fornix till you find pink tissue, which is usually vascularized tenons. You mobilize the tenons and you bring it up to where you want the blood vessels to be to reperfuse the ischemic area. Now this often requires some tugging and pulling of the tenons and sometimes it tears in the process and the vasculature is compromised. So what we came up with is this idea of a free autologous conjunctival transplant. So you can take conjunctiva from the other eye or from somewhere in this eye which has still survived the chemical attack and uh, you need only a strip of it. You can stitch it one end to the pink tenons tissue which is vascularized tissue deep in the fornix and the other end you can bring to either cover the entire cornea or to the limbus where you want the vascularization to come. This free conjunctival graft has its own vasculature because it's fresh tissue. Sooner or later, it reestablishes vascular connections with the pink conjunct uh, tenons at the bottom. So you get a conduit of corneal vessels now carrying blood from the tenons right up to the cornea. So when they come there to the limbus, you virtually reperfuse the limbus. So that's like uh, an extension of the tenoplasty. Alternatively, you, if you think the cornea is melting, you can take a large patch of conjunctiva and stitch it onto the surface of the cornea and make sure at least one part of it is stitched to pink tissue, i.e. vascularized tissue. So the whole cornea surface then get vascularized, it heals, and when this settles, a few months down the road, you can excise this conjunctiva and reuse it to reconstruct uh, an area of simplifron and come back and do your limbal transplants on the cornea. So that's what this new idea is about. Just just to be clear, the, the, the donor conjunctiva the, that, you're, that you're taking, that does not uh, need to include any any limbal stem cells. It can be no, from no, no, further no, up in the yes. conjunctiva. No, 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 absolutely, yes. It can be from anywhere in the conjunctiva of the same or the other eye. We haven't yet tried eye bank conjunctiva, but that is not far away. If you have bits of conjunctiva lying in an eye bank, you could do it, but it'll have to be tested to see if the vasculature will still reconnect. And what happens even with an autologous conjunctiva, by the time it reconnects with the new vessels, the blood vessels have themselves not received oxygen for a while, so you get what's called reperfusion injury. It, they establish reconnection, and as the blood starts to flow, there is swelling, there's hemorrhage, there's leaking of blood, and the conjunctiva becomes thick, and the vessels look really red. And you think, oh my God, what's happening here? But that all settles within less than a week, because the vessels recover, and now they're taking blood from one source and bring it to where you want it to be. You, you described too this really really neat technique uh, with limbal stem cell transplant uh, and amniotic tissue can can i get you to talk yeah, about oh that oh yeah sure it's it's something we've uh, we've uh, called uh, uh, acer which is amnion assisted conjunctival epithelial redirection uh, what happens is when we do a living related or an autologous limbal epithelial explant a limbal uh, tissue explant, we only can do two clock hours from the 12 and 6 o'clock position and transfer it to the 12 and 6 o'clock position of the recipient eye. That leaves a huge area nasally and temporally where there is no limbal tissue and where conjunctival epithelium can go right across the cornea and you get an admixture of limbus derived cells and conjunctival epithelium which is not good for the cornea because you get conjunctivalization. So how do we prevent that? The, the method to prevent it was again one which we described many years ago and it's now standard uh, in, t in textbooks and accepted as sequential sector conjunctival epitheliectomy which simply means you keep scraping away or brushing away the conjunctiva, don't let it cross the limbus until the surface of the cornea has been covered by the limbal plants that you have transplanted and the cells derived from them. Now this procedure of repeated scraping can be painful, can cause bleeding and it requires the patient to come back every 24 to 48 hours. So to avoid all that what we did was we now took a large sheet of amniotic membrane and we tucked it under the edge of the conjunctiva nasally and temporally. So the conjunctiva now lies on the amniotic membrane 
which is stitched on top of the cornea and the limbal explants. So all conjunctival epithelium will grow only on the membrane, whereas the explant-derived epithelium will go under the membrane on the cornea, and there's no way the two can mix. This amniotic membrane, which is on the top, is now redirecting conjunctival epithelium onto itself. That way, it will stop the admixture to occur, and it usually lasts for up to four weeks, by which time it falls off, or you can go and surgically remove it. You just have to take the stitches out and take it off. It can be done as a simple office procedure even. And what you find is by that time, by four weeks, the surface of the cornea has been totally covered by cells derived from the limbal explants. So this avoids this repeated visits. You can get the patient back after two weeks, after three weeks. You don't have to scrape it, repeat it, so it's less painful less of an encumbrance to the patient for repeated visits and is cheaper. So this technique, I think, ACER, which we published initially about two, three years ago as one case in, in a, a clinical, I think it was Journal of Clinical and Experimental Ophthalmology from New Zealand, will take on now as a pretty neat way to uh, treat these patients. It, it is neat. So, I mean, just, just, to, just to go through the layers now. So, in the bottom layer, we have, we have cornea. The next layer up, we have, in a sense, the next yeah. layer up, we have the, the limbal stem cell uh, graft, graft tissue. The right. next layer up covering everything and extending under conjunctiva is the amniotic, amniotic graft, and do, do and you use fre fresh, fresh or, 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 or freeze-dried? Whichever. You can okay. take fresh, freeze-dried, or frozen. And then conjunctiva, well, the uh, edge uh, is on obviously the edge, the edge of the conjunctiva is over, so that when the conjunctiva grows over, even when it grows over that area that has the, the graft under it, it's growing on top of the, Mem the amniotic, amniotic membrane. The, the membrane, which is a acting like masking tape here yeah. uh, and at the end you you just peel it off or it falls off and underneath you have this beautiful pristine layer it's a brilliant stuff you got it, it really is yeah perfect that's it's what really happens. really cool that's what it does dr Dua, thank you so much my pleasure thank you my pleasure